Um, I'm going to be working on Advent of Code uh, day four today. So hopefully everybody's been hacking away at um, Advent of Code, and uh, I'm a little late to the the game here because I have weekends are bad for me for streaming. But we'll see what we can do. Um, I rebooted my computer and re setting everything back up, and so we should be yeah we're ready for day four. So this is going to be a very very short stream. Well, sorry, I should say it depends on how long it takes me to do day four. I've heard rumors that it's not too hard. So fingers crossed. Um, let's read the problem and then we can dive in. Day four camp cleanup. Hopefully it's been enjoyable. Um, so far it's, it's been pretty easy. Uh, I was expecting uh, yesterday to be a little more difficult because weekends tend to be a little more difficult, but so today might be, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, space needs to be cleared before the last supplies can be unloaded from the ships. Oh, that's right. We, we got to the banks of um, some jungle beach and we set up camp. Uh, so several elves have been assigned to the job of cleaning up sections of the camp. Every section has a unique ID number and each elf is assigned a range of section IDs. However, some of the elves compare their section assignments with each other. They've noticed that many of the assignments overlap. Uh, to try to quickly find overlaps and reduce duplicated effort, the elves pair up and make a big list of the section assignments for each pair of your puzzle input. Yeah, you know, well, you kind of want overlap when you're doing cleanup, right? Because uh, somebody might miss something, and you uh, you want to. Okay, I guess the elves are, are better than than humans at cleaning beaches. <laughs> uh, for example, considering the following list of section assignment pairs. All right, so we have a bunch of assignment pairs. For the first few pairs, this list means. Within the first pair of elves, the first elf was assigned sections two to four, and the second elf was assigned section six to eight. So there's their pair up. I see. The elves pair up. So each one of these is a pair of elves. The elves in the second pair were each assigned two sections. Elves in the third pair were each assigned three sections. And when they say two sections, we have two and three, and the second elf is four and five. And this one has three sections, five through seven. So five, six, and seven, seven, eight, nine. I get it. I get it. This example list uses single digit section IDs to make it easier to draw. Your actual assignment, your actual list might contain larger numbers. Well, we'll find out. Find out in a second. Get input 2022 four. There's a thousand entries. Okay. Looks like it's mostly two digit. We can probably do this with, an, with a U size or an I32 or something. Get add input, get commit. Uh, no verify. 24. There we go. Good. All right, so far so good. I think I understand what's going on here. We have just ranges of numbers and we have to figure out what the overlaps are that we have decided is calculate the overlaps. Some of the pairs have noticed that one, uh, one of their assignments fully contains the other. For example, 2 to 8 fully contains 3 to 7. This is true. And 6 to 6 is fully contained by 4 to 6. That's true. This is one section, right? And this is three sections. And this is fully contained within this. I, I understand so far. In pairs where one assignment fully contains the other, one elf in the pair would be exclusively cleaning sections their partner would already be cleaning. So these seem like the most in need of reconsideration. Okay. In this example, there are two such pairs. And how many assignment pairs does one range fully contain the other? All right. That seems very straightforward. Sometimes the way it works with these puzzles is that part A is, can it really boils down to, can you successfully parse the input? And then part B ends up being um, a more complicated manipulation of the data. Let's change that to four. Change that to four and add a day of four. Um, create the module. Jump to the module. 2022.04. And fix this. And we should have this run over here. It failed. There it goes. It just took a little while. Okay. So 2022, day four, and they're both unsolved. So parsing should be straightforward. Uh, let 
lines equals AOC lib read lines input slash 2022.04.txt. Um, and for now, let's just make sure we've read all the lines in. We should see a thousand. Um, oh, right. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Self oh, lines is a vec. A vec of string. Oh, I forgot the self here. A thousand. Perfect. All right. So the format is okay. So first we separate by comma, and then we can separate the subsections by hyphen dash minus. So we can create a struct. Should we call it a pair assignment? Let's call it assignment. And it'll have a left, which is going to be, I don't know, I32, I32, and a right. Should be U size, U size, right? That's right. We'll do it that way. And then we'll say impulse assignment. And pan parse. So this way I can just, what I can do in my parse function is just create a, instead of this, assignments, which is going to be a vector of assignment. Right, and then we can have those just uh, parse out. So it'll be for L for line in this self assignment push assignment parse line. And this is just a stir, right? Oh, it's a it's a full on string. Okay, so we'll say s stir and it returns itself and then it's basically just break it down right we, we split by comma let one two or let's call it a b is equal to s dot split once on comma unwrap so now these should be both stirs yep and each one of them is going to be the first uh, the left, I, I call it left and right, but it's really just first and second. Um, but what I was thinking when I when I did left right is that we could just put the left one, the one on the left on the left, and the one on the right on the right, and that might simplify the um, uh, calculation here. Titan Knox, hello! Finally able to catch a stream. I've been binging your videos for a few weeks now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize for everything I've ever done. Um, but thank you, for, thank you for joining. It's good to see you. All right. Um, so after we split A and B on that, now we have to split each part, right, by by a hyphen. So let's can say pair is equal to A dot split once on the minus on the right, and now we have A dot one and A dot two, which we can shove into left. Left is equal to pair dot zero dot parse i'm gonna try something i'm gonna try without specifying here and then saying pair dot one dot parse dot unwrap i want to see if rust can figure this out all on its own it might not be smart enough to do the, this way right and then i can just say a self left right now, the idea is, what I'm thinking here is that we know that left, because we're doing it here, it's got to be an I32, I32. Will that bubble up to this parse? Or do I have to put the type in there? Um, I just need to change this over here. It compiled. It took it. It figured it out. And now we have a thousand assignments. So the other thing I wanted to do, um, let's call this first and second. And now I say let left right is equal to if first dot zero is less than second dot zero, then it'll be first second else second first that way the in the vector that we 
fill in during parsing, right? The, the one on the left is always going to have the lower um, the lower starting point. So we can make assumptions about um, overlap. Right. Okay, so now, so part one becomes, what are we doing? We're counting. How many assignment pairs does one range fully contain the other? So we basically have assignment range that looks like um, for the left hand, the left start through the left end, and then we have the right start through the right end. Correct? We know that right start always has to be greater than or equal to the left start. So we only care if the left end is greater than or equal to the right end. And if that's true, then they fully overlap, I believe. So we can say self assignment iter filter a uh, a for assignment um, and then right it's a reference to a reference to assignment and then we can say if a so if a dot right dot one is less than or equal to a dot left dot one then it counts we got 456 let's see if we're even close to being right that is not the right answer your answer is too low okay maybe it has to be trickier than that Um, we know that the right-hand side is greater than the left-hand side. Yeah, so it, for this to be fully contained, I mean, we could just do, do the full logic, right? We could just, um, let's do this, um, uh, redundant. Because it's not over, not fully overlapped, it's redundant. If it's redundant, it means that self dot left dot st uh, start why, why is my brain not working the way the way it can overlap is is if it's like this right or it could be rs dot dot re and the le is like that it could right these are the possibilities so if the right end is less than or equal to the left end it should fully overlap but apparently we're, we're missing some by doing that um, so if self left zero is less than or equal to self right zero and self uh, left one is greater than or equal to self right one or the other way around, right? Self right zero is less than or equal to self left zero and self left right one is greater than or equal to self left one. And we can use this logic to determine whether or not uh, redundant. Oops. Oh, expected bool, duh. Right, I got to return bool. Gaffa says, you'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> you believe in me? I appreciate that. 513. That took more than a minute, right? So I should be able to just do this, 513. Here we go. So there's something here that I'm not, I'm not quite getting because if the left... Because the left side is always going to be less than or equal to the right, sorry, the left start is always going to be less than or equal to the right start. So as long as the right end is there. Okay, I'm, I'm missing something. A hint? Um, one way I could hint this is um, 
I mean, on, on my own, like if I were doing this on my own, I would uh, just figure out where this returns true, whereas the other test I had returns false. Actually, we could do that real quick. Uh, so before I go to the hint for, from your Wagafa, I will, I'll, I'm just going to do this, print line, oh, if a, oh no, I can't do that because I did it inside this whole thing. Um, yeah, I'll take the hint. Go ahead and give me the hint while I work on part two. It seems like there's still quite a bit of duplicate work planned. Instead, the elves would like to know the number of pairs that overlap at all. Well, that seems even easier. Um, and of course, now I'm going to get this wrong, right? Self assignment iter filter A. If the, in order for them to overlap the left end, A dot left dot one has to be greater than or equal to right a dot right dot zero count all right i'm going to do this even though oops here we go boom that's right answer. okay what's what's my hint future highway says i have one too if that's okay i i, I put a tag on my stream of uh, backseating allowed so i 100 agree 100 percent agree with all backseating Magafa says left second switching is the problem if i understand it correctly six 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 seven stays the same but six seven six six becomes six 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 seven oh that makes sense that makes sense and uh future highway says i don't think your comment is the same as your logic well i mean that, that just prompts me to remove the comment, right? There we go. Now all my comments agree with my logic. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean, Future Highway. Um, it's, it, it's for the reason that Wagafa was giving. Um, flipping it around doesn't um, doesn't really, and this, this isn't sufficient to ensure um, that, that this is gonna be the case, right? So if we have to say if first is less than second, and hmm first lesson second zero and well yeah i mean it, that means that it, it's always this is always going to start before the other one but if they're equal then what what do we do um and maybe that's that's what we need to do here else if uh first dot zero is equal to second dot zero and actually this should be an and right then we're just putting the logic here <laughs> um and oh no this is or uh first dot zero equals second dot zero and first dot one is greater than or equal to nope oh, Less than or equal to a second dot one. I wonder if that will oh fit on one line. If that'll allow me to do this this easy way. Future Highway says the comment didn't include the inverse L in R and was not accounted for in the comment. Uh, Titanox says if the starts are the same, then you have to check the inverse of your single check. Wagafa says or keep the longest on the first spot. Oh, that makes sense. Future Highway says I can't write proper sentences. No, you know I <laughs> look. I'm, I'm a I'm a chatter on on other people's streams too. So don't 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 apologize for that. I've I goofed up there as more times than I can count. As long as I understand what you mean, then we're good. Uh, Titanox says if the starts are the same, then either A could contain B or B could contain A. Right. Yeah. So I was hoping you know if I said the starts are the same. And this just just means a contains b right so we want to actually the other way around right we want to make sure that b contains a if that this is the case and then maybe we can reduce this to the single a single check although it, this seems fine so i don't know um a dot left dot one is greater than or equal to a dot right dot one. 
No, that's always going to be the case here. Nope. You know what? I'm going to leave it like this. And I'm going to take this part out because everything is working. Uh, let's do that. Just make sure the numbers are still the same, and they are. So this is a very, very fast stream. How, how long does it take me? 24 minutes. And unfortunately, I have to go because this is weekend, and I don't have a lot of time for streaming. McGaffa says, I did the same. Doing the swishing was just too convoluted. Yeah, you, you'd think, I mean, this is such a simple problem, right? You'd think that there would be a very elegant solution rather than this disaster. But this does the trick. Um, I'm sure the speed solvers did it in a better way. Oh, I, oh, it looks like we got the tents here, right? So this is the beach, and then we got the tents going on. Okay. Neat. All right, and then before I go, I just want to take a look at the, uh, let's see, my personal stats. Wow. Very, very high numbers. So, my, so far, my best number was uh, yesterday. Um, but this is because I'm doing this in the afternoon. Normally, I stream in the morning around 7 a.m. Eastern. Oh, right. Let's take a look at some others. Jail. Um, not at the bottom. Um, Twitch coders. There's a lot there. I'm way down here. And on uh, toggle bits. Pretty low. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get a little bit better over time. Titan Knox says, do you have a private leaderboard? I do not. Um, um, I could, it says right here, actually. <laughs> no, I, I haven't created one. I mean, these these are fine if you if you want to join one of these guys. Um, that's fine. But I haven't been motivated to create a private one. The only thing here is, I wonder if, can you do, how does this work in Rust? Because I know sometimes you can just pass in a name of a function and it just works. This is not found in the scope. What if I make redundant a non-self? Right, I just say assignment. And then change all these selves to A. Can I put that here now? Um, almost. Expected due to this required by bounds. Expected function signature this. Found function signature this. Ampersand. Some lifetime. And then this, and it found it without the. Oh, uh, Titanox says, uh, "You're you're on Primes, you're on Primes. Where are you?" D I T A N. You must have a different name on Primes then. I'm all the way down near the bottom on Primes. Yeah, eighty three. Um, but there's got to be some way to do this, right? So I have a, a function signature that looks like this. It takes an A. I mean, it, it has a parameter called A, which is an ampersand assignment. But it's saying it found a function signature without an ampersand on A. It found it here. Do I have to give it some sort of random lifetime? Uh, we got this as using another ampersand on the function redundant. I can do that. Like that. Wow. That's kind of awkward, isn't it? All right. Now I want to do this. I know I said I was going to end my stream, but now I'm... Now I'm doing this. Because of course I am. Why do you need two, I guess, is my question. Um, Self-assignment, filter, assignment, overlaps. Yeah, now it fits on one line. And it comes up with the same answer. 
Filter is finicky and it usually gets ampersand ampersand type instead of a simple type. Glitch but small says it's just that dot iter dot filter double borrows. Oh, yeah, but it's okay. So then I don't understand the error message, right? Um, maybe the error message is out of date or something because it's saying it was expecting. Oh no, there is a double borrow here. It's just that it got split up by the lifetime. I see. I see. Okay. For a beginner rustation like myself, that was a little on the confusing side, but now, now I understand. Thank you. Thank you, everybody in chat. Um, I learned something. Uh, I guess the only other thing I would love to be able to do is make this so that it doesn't have to be an associated function, but it could just be, um, I could take self. Um, but I don't know how the, uh, you'd pull that into scope here because that needs this needs to be. Oh, can you just do that? Well, let me do it on the other one because there's fewer things to change. No, that doesn't work. You can't have an, a double borrow on self. Expected one of nine possible tokens. Um, and says it does not have a self parameter. Can you define self differently? Can you say self? You can do that. Um, but I think that then that's still not a self, right? And then it's just an, a variable that's called self, and not an actual self, right? Um, I bet you I could say something like um, uh, assignment um, parse three four oh no it's three dash four five dash six come on dash jeez um, dot overlaps right that won't work. Yeah, method not found. Um, so it, it doesn't it doesn't recognize this as a self. It just takes it as a random variable name that just happens to be equal. Uh, glitch bot uh, but small and Wagafa both are suggesting doing self double ampersand self. We can try that. Oh, and now I deleted this line. What was it? There. No. Still is not finding that. Method is available for assignment here. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to do that. To make it, uh, to pass into the filter a... Um, struct method as opposed to an associated function. That's something to look up, but not right now because now I'm way over time. Uh, let's change this back to assignment, change this back to A, change it back to A, make sure we didn't break it. Everything looks good. Okay, git status, git add source, git commit dash m 2022 day four parts one and two and there we go get push all done all right thanks for hanging out with me everybody i know it was a really short stream um i meant to only go a half hour and it's already been a little over so